So welcome back to another installment of Garage Science. Today I will be reviewing the Autodesk Clear Resin uh, that they developed for the Ember 3D printer. Uh, I've used this resin in the 3D Factor Draken DLP printer and I've had really good results and so I'm going to share some of those results and some of my thoughts on uh, how it was like to work with this resin. So first of all, uh, you can get the uh, Autodesk resin uh, from Autodesk itself. Uh, it's a little more expensive there. They, uh, they have slightly higher shipping costs. So I went with uh, another U.S. supplier, the Rio Grande, and so they uh, sell it for just a little bit less and uh, it's a little cheaper shipping. So I got this for about $125. Uh, it's not too bad. It's a little more expensive than the fun to do resin that you can get for around $90, um, but significantly less expensive than, say, like Form Labs resin. So uh, a couple of my initial thoughts on, on this resin is that it, uh, it does come out uh, very clear, um, and I'll talk uh, more about that and how to get even clearer results uh, with this resin. Uh, some of the other uh, things I came across was that the uh, parts do tend to be a little more brittle. Um, it's advertised on the Autodesk website as being for snap fit parts, um, but if you're really trying to get uh, really tight fitting, snap fitting parts, uh, you may have issues with uh, uh, parts being a little too brittle to really snap together real well, and uh, you might have some breakage uh, due to that. So not the toughest resin, but again, it's uh, developed uh, mostly for clear uh, parts and, and specific applications where you need uh, 3D printed part that's clear. Because I have a wide varying uh, light intensity distribution along my uh, build plate, so I'm developing a, a mask builder program to fix that. Uh, but for right now, um, it takes about 7 to uh, 10 seconds to cure the resin, um, and that's at a layer height of 50 microns. Um, that's with my DLP projector set at an 80 micron XY resolution, so a reasonably large build area. And uh, slightly longer cure times and safe on to do maker juice uh, resins. Um, but again, it's, uh, it's not overly long. One of the other things I didn't notice is that uh, as if you allow the resin to be exposed to the atmosphere, um, it will um, vent off, right? It produces an odor. Um, if you do that for too long, uh, over time, it will take longer to cure your resin. So uh, be careful about that. And if you're going to leave uh, resin in your tank for an extended period of time, just put something over it so it doesn't... Uh, gas off uh, too much and degrade your resin uh, over time. They do give you this handy bottle. Uh, it actually comes with a cap that's a, a flat cap and then uh, they actually send you a second cap that's actually a pouring cap and so you can replace that and actually get a really nice pouring cap uh, on your resin bottle. So I really appreciated that uh, from Autodesk and that was a good addition. Uh, they also put the uh, expiration date on the side of the bottle. So this one was supposed to expire September 23rd, 2018. Uh, it's been used uh, significantly before that date. So uh, check for that when you get your Autodesk resin uh, and see that it hasn't uh, expired somehow. All right, so what I thought of the prints. Uh, one of the first objects that I printed once I got the exposure times calibrated was I wanted to see just how clear I could get a part to print and I did that by printing a lens. So I designed a lens in Autodesk Fusion 360, and uh, this was uh, the result. So after I pulled it off the printer, I hit it with 1,000 grit and 2,000 grit sandpaper to get uh, layer lines, those final layer lines uh, uh, erased off the surface of the part to get it uh, really, really smooth. Uh, as I did that, it uh, kind of clouded the surface right from all those micro scratches. And so what I did, what I found I could do is uh, if you dip these parts in a uh, finish, a clear gloss finish. I've been using Minwax Polycrylic uh, finish. Uh, the parts come out looking practically like glass and it's, uh, it's really impressive. So uh, I really liked seeing the results I got uh, of this lens and I was pretty excited to see um, really how clear the part came out. So um, and then you may have seen one of my other videos uh, that I did where I for Valentine's Day, I made my wife a heart pennant, and so uh, this was another part that I printed, uh, and I just, I didn't really do anything that special to it, uh, and I didn't spend as much time sanding it, and I dipped it in the Minwax Polycrylic, and it actually came out looking pretty nice, and one of the cool things actually uh, that might be considered a defect, but I, I actually think it creates a cool concept, is that there's uh, actually little bubbles in the heart, and so if you actually designed a part so that as it prints, it intentionally traps bubbles. You could theoretically print a part and then have, you know, bubbles trapped throughout it that create some sort of image logo, uh, something of that nature. And so there's a lot of opportunity for something like that. 
So I thought that was pretty cool. In terms of the clarity itself, um, I've got this part that I printed to uh, get an idea of what the light distribution uh, on my printer looks like. And so you can see as it uh, goes across, the posts get uh, progressively uh, a little smaller. And that's because uh, exposure is a little higher on the right side versus the left side. And uh, what you'll see is that uh, I dipped about 80% of it in the polycrylic, and it came out looking really clear. And the other side looks uh, just a little uh, clouded. And uh, it's pretty scratched up, and that's because uh, the plate here was directly on the build plate, so all the scratches from the build plate um, were transferred over to the part. And so just a simple dipping this in the polycrylic solution actually made it quite a bit clearer. And it actually came out looking uh, actually pretty cool. It looks, uh, if I was to print it without it being on the build plate, it'd probably look almost like a plate of glass. One of the things I did notice, though, is uh, if you clean your part in isopropyl alcohol and you let it soak for too long, uh, it will actually develop uh, cracks on the surface. And so uh, I've got this other part here that was, again, an uh, exposure calibration piece uh, from the printer but I intentionally put it in the isopropyl alcohol for about two or three days. And uh, you'll see on the surface there is a ton of scratches. And the parts itself, the little posts, are actually uh, very brittle now and break off with little to no effort. And so that solvent, the isopropyl alcohol, actually looks like it embrittled the part uh, quite a bit. So um, as you're cleaning your parts, uh, don't do it for too long. I would recommend only five to ten minutes. Uh, just to make sure you don't get any embrittlement on your parts, so just to get the excess resin off. And uh, another good example from that and how it can kind of degrade the surface finish, most of the, uh, the, the scratches and cracks on the surface uh, from the isopropyl alcohol will go away uh, when you dip it in polycrylic, but uh, it's still not that appealing and it does uh, cause embrittlement to the part. Left it in the isopropyl alcohol for eh, a couple hours because uh, I kind of forgot about it. And then took it out, and you can see there's cracks on the surface. Um, but all in all, it did turn out uh, pretty nice. Uh, one of the things I will mention, though, about this resin that's uh, just inherent to it being clear is that because it allows light to travel through the part itself, uh, something like this where uh, there's opportunity for resin to gather uh, near the top of the part as it's getting pulled out of the bath, is that resin that settles up there uh, will actually cure slowly but surely as light is continued to be projected to cure the rest of the part, um, that light will travel through the part and cure the resin that's settled on the other side. And so you just have to be uh, mindful of that. It's um, important you orient your parts so that way you don't get puddles of resin uh, underneath your supports as it's being pulled out. The other thing that's really important to keep in mind is that if you are intending to do a long print or a big print, something that's going to require a fair amount of resin, uh, it's better to keep a very small amount of resin in your tank and then just continue adding a little bit uh, over time. I made the mistake of trying to do a uh, pretty large print and ran it overnight and just filled up the resin tank with about as much uh, resin as it would be able to hold just because I wanted to make sure I wouldn't run out. Um, but because of that, um, a lot of resin gathered up on the part as it was printing and that light that is being projected through the part just cured the tar out of all that excess resin and it... Uh, pretty much ruined the part. So I had to go at it pretty hard with a Dremel to get most of that excess resin off. And it was just a pain, and then there's resin dust from the sanding everywhere, and it was it was a mess. So I would highly recommend leave, use only maybe, I would say, less than a quarter inch of resin in the bottom of your tank while you're printing, and just uh, monitor it and add a little more uh, as needed. So back to the uh, finish that I would put on these parts with the polycrylic, I did print this rook. And uh, you'll notice there's a small piece missing off the top of it. That's because uh, these parts uh, still are a little brittle and they're not uh, childproof. So be careful uh, if you have little hands running around. They don't get to these uh, too quickly. But uh, what I did was I dipped this in the polycrylic. And I came out looking pretty clear. And I wanted to just see kind of how that uh, polycrylic finish would hold up to a solvent. So I did soak it in uh, IPA for a few hours. Took it out and it was very cloudy. The surface had gummed up and most of it had wiped off, and so it was fairly well uh, ruined. Um, but I wanted to see if you could get back uh, kind of the original part, and so I put it in a tumbler to try and get uh, all that excess finish off, and uh, still came out a little bit uh, cloudy after that. And unfortunately, the spiral that goes up the center of the part actually uh, was broken off by the, the steel pins I use in my tumbler. 
but uh, it still didn't quite look uh, too great, so I dipped it in the polyacrylic again and uh, came out, and it's, uh, it looks pretty good now. It's, uh, it's not perfect, but uh, reclaimed a lot of that uh, surface finish. And so the, uh, I would definitely say if you're going to use this resin, get the polyacrylic uh, finish, something close to that, because uh, it covers a multitude of sins. All in all, my impressions with this resin have been very positive. Um, again, the only issue I would say is it's still a little more brittle than I would like to have in a, a printer that's printing functional parts. So in the future, when I get another bottle of this resin, it's going to be primarily for optics-based projects uh, where you want the clear properties of that resin. And so um, I would recommend it for those types of projects. If you're planning to print functional parts, um, I would say try and do something like um, what I do with some of my parts where I copper plate them. And so this is an example of something that was uh, 3D printed and then copper plated. There's about three quarters of a millimeter of copper on either side of the part. So this is actually a very strong part and um, it can put up with a lot now that it's been copper plated. And so consider that if you're trying to make really functional prints with this type of resin, uh, again, you're going to lose the the clear properties if you do something like that. So one of the other uh, things that you'll notice if you print this, uh, if you use it, is uh, there's a slight yellowish tint to these parts when they come out. Um, the thicker they are, the more obvious it is. And so uh, be mindful of that. Uh, even with these parts, you can't really tell unless look lengthwise down the parts where it's thickest. Um, and even then, it's really not that bad. But <clears throat> it is something to keep in mind. It's not liquid, purified water, clear, it, it's not that clear. There is there is an ever so slight yellowish tint. The resin, I, it, it keeps all the fine details in your print uh, just fine. And so I uh, didn't really encounter any issues with that. It worked great. Uh, it wasn't too long uh, of a curing time for each of the layers. So one of the other cool properties about it being uh, clear is that uh, under UV light it actually glows uh, purple. And so if you're looking for something specific, uh, some sort of special uh, part for uh, a project involving UV light, uh, you can actually get that cool effect of a glowing purple part. Um, keep in mind that obviously UV light cures the resin, and so you're going to get a ton of uh, embrittlement in the part if you expose it to UV light for an extended period of time. But for a short-term uh, project, something that you want a one-off, something that uh, glows under UV light, uh, you can use this resin for uh, projects like that, and it will work really well. And, and look. Uh, in terms of the odor, um, I would say it's, it's got a mild odor, uh, not as strong as some of the other resins. I think uh, Maker Juice resin is, is actually a little more odorous than this, um, but uh, it's not bad. Um, it's certainly nothing that is um, like toxic. It's a good idea to keep uh, your space uh, ventilated just so uh, that odor isn't uh, an annoyance. I didn't really encounter any issues with uh, the odor being overpowering or, or too much to handle. So again, I was uh, pretty pleased to find that the parts would come off the printer actually already pretty clear. Um, most of the the loss and the clarity is also going to be related to your layer thickness and your uh, XY uh, resolution. And so depending on how small of a build area you're using for DLP printers or what you have your settings set to for an SLA printer is uh, going to affect that surface uh, detail. And so that will affect the, the final uh, clarity of the project. Um, so again, good reason to have the polyacrylic solution because that'll fill in the, the very minute small layer lines that uh, you get on these printers and any other uh, small uh, errors in the surface. was uh, surprised to find uh, how clear they do come off the printer straight off the bat. Um, obviously they're clear when they're wet um, so after you take the printer the part off and it's got a little bit of excess resin on it, it, it looks quite a bit clearer. You dip it in isopropyl alcohol, get the excess resin off and it comes off looking mildly cloudy, but it's really not bad. Um, and then again, if you dip it in a, um, a finisher like the polyacrylic, then you get a really nice clear finish. So I know I've tried to sell the uh, polyacrylic qu quite a bit, but uh, it makes a really big difference. So hopefully I, I conveyed that accurately. So if you're new to the channel and you haven't uh, checked out my other videos, uh, you can go to the channel and subscribe there, look at some of my other videos. I plan to do a lot more reviews on resins. I hope you enjoyed this review. If you have comments, uh, suggestions, uh, questions you have about the resin, uh, you leave them in the video description. And if you have something you didn't like about this review, you just want to share with me as well. I'd love that. I want to try and make these reviews um, more informative and better to watch. And as always, if you like this video, uh, go ahead and give me a thumbs up and uh, subscribe if you haven't already. And I really appreciate that. And hope you enjoyed watching and look out for the next review. Thanks for watching.